they are all lying. They are all, they got together and they were like, we are going to ruin some lives, people. Welcome to CCG. If you're new here, I'm Julie. This is Lyle. And we, we play, play games, games here. And aim to brighten your day. Today we're going to dive into something a little bit different. Julie's not sure what this is. I have no idea. No <laughs> so idea. So this is called The Beginner's Guide. And it's a narrative video game from Davey Redden, the creator of The Stanley Parable. Oh. Um, it lasts, it's about an hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. and it has no traditional mechanics, no goals, no objectives. It tells a story of a person struggling to deal with something they do not understand. Oh, well, we can all relate to that. We've <laughs> all been there. So basically this game is for people who are, are creative and kind of hit that wall where you're no longer, you can't make anything creative, you're just you're stuck. Wow, relatable. So this is, again, is highly recommended. I've seen it the last like two or three weeks. People are like, just play this game. If you can't come up with an idea, play this game. I love that. All right, let's do so it. We're going to try it. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Cool. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh... I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. Seriously? And, uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like oh, is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Sick! So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. <laughs> so, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together, is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. Do it! As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay. <gasps> I've got a gun! Unlimited ammo? This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Nope, can't go that way. I do love generic. Generic is simple. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> pew, 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 pew! Yeah? Think so? You want some of this? This is for Coda! It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. 
For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or There's enemies. no monsters. But then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy forces arise. Begin to shoot the I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Ah. That's, so cool. That's so cool. Cool. It's a perfect jump scare scene. The station yeah. has a labyrinth on it. I. Uh, sure, I don't know. There's sure. really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Appreciate this it. is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That being is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? You want me to put my body in the beam? No! I live for myself! We're gonna railroad me, aren't we, Coda? Let's go. Damn it, Coda! Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, was a railroad. Is probably what Coda had well. initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. I'm alive. I'm a god. You can't hurt me. We've had this happen before. Usually we go down. Yeah. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. I'm floating. Okay. Yep. In this game, you can only walk back. I was just gonna oh. say. No. <laughs> the path was behind her. Oh. No, it's not. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Mm -hmm. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Fair, fair, fair. Cool, cool, cool. But if the future's always behind her, how will she find the strength? Which I, yeah, we probably should have been reading everything that I was saying. My bad. My bad, guys. To, to confront, confront it. It. it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which, to me, is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Quick and easy. Oh, this is spookies. This is spookies. Oh. This is spookies. You are now entering the Twilight Zone. No. Please, no. Nothing. We're entering nothing. Oh, good. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Oh, you better make it interesting there, Davey. December 2008. Oftentimes, Coda would put direction. bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Okay. 
I wish Nonsense. I knew this. Every direction. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Jumping over the rail! Well, they railroad you to not jump over the rail? They sure did. And now I'm walking slowly. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, oh. the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. So slow. So slow. Press enter. There we go. <laughs> I was like, no, it's dragging on too long. Ooh. Stand on an X staring at a bear for three hours. A game of only posters and concept art showing what the game is intended to be. A game where you collect items except the game automatically oh, quits when you collect them all. And nice. You and run a shop inside your bodies for you. selling your organs strategically to make the most money before you die. Wow. A stranger appears. A game of unmotivational quotes. He didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. <laughs> He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. Oh, it can like be a very room. slow climb to get there. <clears throat> Press U to surrender. Didn't work. Ready, set, fish! Ready, set, fish! Ooh, fishing episode! Come on, fam, we're going fishing. We're going fishing? <laughs> he doesn't care. He's like, I ain't getting your scritches. You know, I don't care about nothing. You don't have your damn fish. Oh, it's that little uh, scritch. Oh, there's a lever! It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Just pull the lever. Don't, don't congratulate me for that. There has to be something else to open the other door. Nope, now you're just stuck. Nope. Oh. <gasps> Don't forget that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. <laughs> we're going to see him a lot. Gotcha, Coda. That's sneaky. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right. Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Whoa! Look at all the stairs. Look at all the pathways. We just never got to. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Okay. Either I way, it. I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your Fair. role here is not to understand, then what is it? Yeah, what is it? Mm. Uh oh it's not our role to understand. Okay? Okay. It's not our role to understand. Well, I'm trying and failing. You are now exiting. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that means. Meanwhile, I was like, man, I'm just making games. <laughs> I don't know what they meant. I was high half the time. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know if Koda ever did that. No idea. <gasps> Ooh, a house. Is this right? Seven Days to Die? That's what it looks like. It looks like a house in Seven Days Let's to Die. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. 
So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. Ooh. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The tools available to the <gasps> You might consider paying attention to the architecture oh of those God. games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. Nope. Nope. Oh. Oh, good. No. It was purposeful. It wasn't a we, uh, we failed. No. I don't know if you can fail this game. No light for us. Do not follow the light. It's a train. Wait. Is there a cable? Okay. Oh, don't get smashed. Don't you smash me in the little bitties. Mm. I didn't like that. I didn't like that either. <gasps> oh. That was rude. Wait, what the heck? Oh, we're on. Oh, okay. Ah. I couldn't get off. I got railroaded again. Oh, no. Oh. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Well, if you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. Thank a you. A full hour? Thank you for skipping that. that. He and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. <laughs> Koda's real passive aggressive. Yeah, no kidding. That's that is petty revenge. <laughs> Switch! I'll go again. With the exact same solution as the last time. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Oh, you poor, poor clumsy kitty. Hey, mister. He's just over here stumbling all over me trying to find a comfy spot. Hey. Oh, Mr. Overbite. Don't bite that. Whoa! Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Okay. Yes, there was a world stamp of whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. Yes, there were these floating colored blocks. Where did you come from up above? What was up there? That was prison. That was prison? I came from prison. Oh, good. Prison, you say. That's the world above. You've been there. Now, this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming in. Yeah. Again, perfect. Now, please tell us how you solved it. Tell us a solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. I don't remember how to solve it. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. If I didn't solve it, someone else let me in. Trust me, you don't want to go over there. Oh, I didn't solve it. Someone let me in. I wonder if it's like a fourth wall thing. Maybe. Let's try it. You didn't solve it. So you have learned nothing. You cannot help us escape this prison. You are not the one I need. Surely there will be someone else. Technically, none of those answers really gave me the answer I need to give you. 
Whatever. I did it. You suck. Goodbye. I did it. You suck. That's uh. Yep. I'm gonna try this again. Yep. Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Yes. Oh. Do you want to know how to solve it? No. We actually find the black space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it? Why would I care about the space between yes. the doors? Actually, now that you mention it, I remember feeling strange as I passed through it. Well, smoky. I don't recall a space between them. It was salty. Do you smell sulfur? Don't think too hard about it. You'll see it again soon. Is that a threat? Sounds like a promise. Don't you promise threaten me. Don't you smack you. Smack! Smack. With the dick. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> preferably not. What they deserve. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Anyone else getting dizzy? Get a little bit, <laughs> yeah. Don't you shut that door on me. Feels that way though, doesn't it? It does now. Ooh, we're outside. Oh, nice. We got some hoppers out here. Perfect. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Oh. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Cool. Okay, okay. Let's okay. do it. Show me his ideas. That was awful. <laughs> Let me tell you. April 2009. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. <gasps> All notes you see are left by other players. <gasps> really? That's so cool. Well, I, it could be cool. This is Dark Souls. Uh oh. Dark Souls does this. Do they? Mm -hmm. Look up, look up. Look back up. Oh, sorry. Maybe. Nice room. Not. <laughs> So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. Mm -hmm. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam mm -hmm. in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, <laughs> I was Reasonable. Really but he was very <laughs> Good gracious timing. about it mm -hmm. and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Hey! Okay, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me, they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played <laughs> that's how long one no thank you oh they uh, they unhighlight when you read when but it's you read ironic them. isn't it that in playing this game and seeing how alone coda often felt that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him and i have to be honest Fair. with you this idea is really seductive to me that i could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing i could just <laughs> get to know you through your work i think this is why i always liked kodu games so much is this because is so it felt like they let me have that connection i felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world and then i feel less lonely too i get that yeah. i'm not safe that's oh. oh no that's not something you want to see to us or to yourself or from 
Whoever made this has people. issues. Well, yes. You have to, but that's... Again, what if that's like him admitting it? Well, yeah, I mean, we're all, you know, we're all mad here. Who am I to judge? Ooh. His terrible secret, secret he kept it well. Ooh, is he, is Ooh he it's a, going dark. Is he a serial killer? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. I can't believe how quickly you got this puzzle in the beginning. Banked it. Yeah, I would have. I panicked. I'm like, no, I never really locked in here. Oh no, we're gonna be judged by a group of our peers. I, typewriters. I do not want that. Oh, these typewriters are leaving notes. All the typewriters in his brain, isn't it? Oh, Led by the lamppost. Oh, his singular hope. Are you there? Please say something. It can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having difficulty talking? Speak, 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 speak. We're having dialogue coming up underneath us. Sorry, guys. Porn stars, stars die, die too? too? It's going to kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Was this GTA before GTA? Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. Because I'm down with that. This is so like a 70s vibe house. It really is. Is this where I buried the bodies? And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just so you are the body. The Except for some reason, Cody gets really Buffalo Bill that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's going to start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Didn't ask me to put the lotion on my skin. Okay. What furniture ought to go in the center of the room? Uh, how about a TV with surround sound? I might as well just switch this to the side. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. A refrigerator. Put a giant hole in the ground. Let's put a giant hole in the ground. I agree. You do like giant that's holes in the ground. not a hole in the ground. That is a glass coffee table. Who owns a glass coffee table? Okay, now what about along the wall of the room? Let's put a huge picture of a horse. I really like a washing machine. Ten stoves lined up along the wall. Ten stoves. Yep. Sir! Why are you asking? You know I hate this. For being railroaded. Yeah, you hate ask, being asked questions <laughs> that have no logical answer. Like that No! If, if you're going to ask me a question, I want choice, not the illusion of choice. M whatever I say had better be happening, or possibility of happening. Yeah. I think we should light up this room a bit. A skylight, full ceiling window. Let's open this up, baby. I'm thinking 10 by 12 recessed electric, 6-inch soft LED ceiling lights with fluorescent trim. Mm, let's open it up. We'll put live Tesla coils in each corner. Oh yeah. my goodness, we'll put live Tesla coils. Yes. Bet you we don't. What about lights? And a table! You need a table! Who are you? Where exactly are you doing this from? I'm pretty sure none of my choices are making any difference! Tables were invented in 1935. There's only number two, because it's true! Tables were invented in 1935? That can't be true. Can't be true. Oh! Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. My brain. 
I don't like it. I don't like it either. It's, it's too much. He throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison. Good idea. A different direction. <clears throat> Hello. Please walk forward. You got it. Are we in the Matrix? Oh, it said something. Oh, no. The guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. No. Neo! Convenient. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. No, don't make me remember. Ooh, this is kind of nice. Click on the table. No! Yeah. Oh, I hate my choice. Gotta, gotta go click on the table. Ah! Good. Go over to the photo frame and click it to turn it slightly. <clears throat> Now turn the floor lamp in this room off and turn it back on. Oh no. Now go to the left side of the sofa, move it over a little. The sofa? Yep. Finally touch the shelves. Oh no, not the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. Oh. Hmm. Don't want to go to prison. That was incredibly sad. It was sad. Oh, I didn't even think this was a prison. I thought these were shades. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the way. Ah! And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Oh. Wow! Let me just look real quick if there are a few more of these. <clears throat> we really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen. It was in a dark place. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. Yeah. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular... Whoa, that tripped me up. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he lights it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Doctor? Doctor? Is that you? Doctor? Doctor who? Oh, TARDIS has been looking, has seen better days. Uh. Are we now playing Tokyo whatever it's called? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was scary. Why am I just watching this house? Hello, who is this? Hey, it's me. It's you from after you escaped the prison. You're me. So you were trapped in this prison too? Appar <laughs> apparently. Yep, I was in the maze. For I was in the furniture maze. Yep, I was the escape turret. So yep, I was in the reverse prison. Wants is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Mm -hmm. That's where I am right now. I'm so glad to know I can get out eventually. What's it like to escape? Actually, I'm already forgetting what being in prison was like. It's strange, but in a way, I kind of miss being in prison. It feels like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. This feels just existential. So existential. Oh, I'm gonna... Do you feel any different? Yes. Sometimes I'm scared I'll get out and then things will be exactly the same as before. Oh, no. No, I'm really the same person now as I was back then. It actually does change. I don't feel like the same person at all. Let's go for some positivity, geez. Oh, good! That's so nice to hear. That makes me feel really happy. Age just kind of does that, you know? I'm still me, but I'm still not somehow. It's hard to describe. Remember to enjoy being who you are right now. It won't last. That's Well, that was good up until the last part. We're gonna go with number two. It's still me, but somehow it's hard to describe. Oh. Wait, if you're me, 
And did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? No. No, I think I'm the first person to call back. Yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. Then can you tell me how to get out? Maybe I can come find you. What do I have to do? One, to get out, all you have to do is be sincere. Two, to get out, you need to tell me how you feel right now. Oh, I hit a button. Oops. Damn it. To get out, all you have to do is be sincere. What? That will free me? Yep. How does that work? That doesn't make any sense. None. One, listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. Two, just be sincere. Three, it will make sense. It will make sense. It's too late. We've dived down this rabbit hole too far to turn back now. <laughs> yeah. Sincere about what? That's exactly what you need to figure out in order to escape. Be sincere about you being lonely. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, yeah, actually, that would be nice. I'm gonna need to go lay down for 12 hours and no contemplate my existence. Yeah. August 2009. Other than himself. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. There's a mess. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, clean. Okay. Well, my goodness. I'm glad it's all heck that you showed up. Thought I might be having to clean this entire house all by myself. And right miserable that would have been. Everyone knows lonesome hands make lousy homes. I went for a redneck accent, cold by mistake. Including this. Oh, good. Now we're gonna. Now I gotta move us over again. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work. And this particular game took two months to create as a result. One, don't worry about me. A place this nice will be glad to stay here all night. Two, lousy homes make home loners. Oh, no. Three, are we cleaning this whole place? Three. No, thank you. That's the story, little one. Oh, don't you worry now. We'll be through this mess in no time. I promise you'll wish there was more. Well, no, I won't. Why don't I finish up here? In the meantime, could you please clear the table? Oh, boy. Much nicer. That's the table I want to see. Now, would you please run to the bedroom and make the bed? Uh, okay. So Where's the bedroom? Our bed or your bed or... Whose bed? Let's see in the back there. It's very interesting. Like bath? My bed. Wish it was that quick. Yeah. Why then you're straighten out the rug a little? All the de little details matter. Oh, this is not straight at all. Is it straight? It's not. No, it's not straight. It's not straight. This wall is not. It's not lining up. The, the wall's not straight either. The rug is straight in the room to the window, but not the. The room is not straight. That's a de little details matter. One, how do you enjoy being a house cleaner? Two, how'd you end up doing this job? Three, it's been a long time since I've seen a house this messy. How'd you end up doing this job? Oh, I gotta leave this room. Oh my god, yep. Thank you for that. A friend dragged me along at a time when I was particularly desperate for cash. Turns out I've never been, felt so good doing something for money in my whole life. Never did like clean my own home. Might have got some demons there. Ain't ready to face yet. Well, better. Well, speaking of demons, someone's put this couch all in a mess. Would you come out and straighten these pillows here? Are they straight? Why are you just sitting there doing nothing, sir? Oh, okay, that's fair. That, the pillows are okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh dear, looks like someone spilled a drink over the couch. Maybe mop that up as long as you're over there. I feel compelled to share an incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Do you absolutely have to? Yes. Oh. No, I don't. It was stupid. Never mind. Oh, now I feel bad. 
Maybe these dishes need to be washed. Why don't you come do that? I feel horrible now. Master check the tub needed a cleaning. How about you scrub it down as best you can? It's like two. Are there still books scattered on the floor of the bedroom? If so, would you put them back on the shelf? I want to go in the bedroom again. Perfect. Now then, how about you come and clear the dishes off the table? What? After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you and eventually cohere into something meaningful. One, house cleaning is so difficult. How do you do it? Two, are all houses this easy to clean? Three, do these chores ever end? Three. <laughs> Darling, let me tell you something. Whatever work you do, you have absolutely got to own it. Otherwise, it owns you. So why don't you be with the task at hand and leave the future chores to future you? Present you wants to smooth out the rug of the bedroom. Believe it or not, like this trust me on this one. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. He just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Earlier, when I said I had a really cheesy thought, I was going to say that it occurs to me that one's house is a lot like one's soul. You take care of it, and it takes care of you. <laughs> I don't know why I felt so weird. Why I felt so weird about saying that. One, I get it. It's a weird thing to say to someone you just met. Two, yeah, you're right. That's pretty cheesy. Three, there's a little bit of truth in it, no? Oh, three it is. Anyway, so, housekeeping. Let's keep doing this. Books, would you please clean up the books? Does, Thanks. Is anybody else having a very concerned feeling to where this is going? I don't oh, feel goodness. good about where this is going to end. Up. Those pillows over on the couch are a real mess. Are they on? Table again? Question. Do you enjoy this? Whoa! The music stops. Your companion is gone. It's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. Did the How aliens get him? I'm gonna stay in the dark space. I was born in the dark. You merely a dark. I was born in the dark. Molded by it. <laughs> Millie adopted the dark. Okay, well, here we go. Whoops. Let me up the ramp. Hell of a lamppost. And lick it. I don't know. Whole point of Get your tongue stuck to it. <laughs> You're a Canadian, sir. You know better than that. Which means I know how to get my tongue off of it. Hot water. September 2009. Items you love, members only prices. Uh, we're in a class. We are in Why did you come here today? Was it to improve your life? Was it to get a better job? Maybe. Was it to make your relationships more meaningful? No. Probably you come not. here to become perfect. Oh, did I. This workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect. I want your friends, the people in your life to look at you and think, Wow, this person is a better human being than I am. Right now, who do you think about that way in your own life? Who do you know who is so well developed as a person they make you feel disgusted with yourself? Compared to whom you feel useless, selfish, ungrateful. I intend to make you into that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how we do it, but how do we do effortlessly? This is easy. It is so easy. So About easy. The game, the Being perfect is effortless. Oh! Oh, good. One. This is the key. Oh, we're gonna die. How do I achieve with no effort? And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also, you can move around the classroom now. 
Two, on the way to work, I told another person to stand, start contributing to society. Kids should not follow their dreams. <laughs> I need to go lay down. You can try to. Okay. Okay, nothing happened. Well, let me tell you right now, if it isn't effortless, then it's not the right answer. Two, I still love you. You said you make me feel cold on the inside. Three, being alone must be awful. Three, being alone must be awful. One, thank goodness all of you perceive me as being wise and intelligent. Two, drinking is not hurting my life. Mm -hmm. Three, if you are torturing yourself trying to find the right solution for your life, you are not doing it right. It must be the yellow ones that are advancing the story. That's why I was going against them. Yeah, I think that that's... Do you understand that you won't be happy until you love me? This is for you. I think the, the dark ones are his inner thoughts. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yep, 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 yep. Ew, I'm developing a cyst. Gross. Yeah, we're gonna go down. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> One. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. Just kidding. Two. Anyone, anyone want to do some ecstasy <laughs> after this? Three. There is no truth. There's no path. Anyone want to do some ecstasy after this? We did make a drug joke earlier, so. One. What if I'm not a good teacher? Two. Do what is easiest. Do what is simplest. Feel what is true. Three. Holy sh you guys, something is coming out of the back of the room. Look out! Let me just go through it. I didn't read it before you did. I thought he was going to say something is coming out of the back of me. No, oh, gross. I'm hurting myself. One, nothing. No one. Two, it's coming for you. It's going to destroy you. Three, everyone run. Run! experiences that you can have perfection to uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human mm -hmm. Agreed. I, I didn't get the answer perfection you gave me the option didn't let me do it oh hey look at this back in a 70s room this one took okay. a lot longer than all the others for coda to make it was four months between this and the last one that's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. Alan Wake? Yeah, for real. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, that scared me. All right, the performance is beginning. Places, please. Ah, finally, Wait. somewhere where I feel comfortable. In this scene, you'll be playing as me. We are at a gathering of professionals. Did I get a script? First, you'll start out leaning against this wall. No, I will not! <laughs> you can't make me. Fine, I'll do it. Yes, they can. Good. Stay right there. The woman across the room in this chair is a professional photographer of animals. It's your dream to photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to learn something from her, to gain something to succeed. Go on. Say something to her. Excuse me? Ma'am. Did it hurt falling from heaven? No, no, that is not one of the options, sir. Where is the bathroom is the correct answer. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> what are you doing? You're deflecting. You're not saying that's what's actually on your mind. Stop dancing around and have a conversation with this person. I tried. I asked you if it fell from falling from heaven. No, nope, that is not Julie a conversation. said no. That is not a conversation, sir. I'm super, super scared right now. I like you. You're all of my hopes and dreams. Okay, what is it that we want to say? What is on our mind? It's I like you. That seems like the first one. Sure, that's not forward at all. No, no, no. That's not what I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of the conversation. Wise, happy, focused successful for some reason it was just that one moment but i was confident maybe it's that you need a better feel of the setting there were a lot of people around us i'll give you some props to work with these cones that bounce when you touch them will represent the people nearby touch them oh oh that's mm. fun okay 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 you must have worked really hard to get where you are two 
Oh, but you've learned to, to lean into the pain. Three, what are some sacrifices you've had to make? <gasps> what are some sacrifices? Probably, right? Sacrifices? I think so. Oh, You're well. messing it all up again! The freak out in the conversation gets that personal and quick. I said I like her. <laughs> yeah. Do you not realize how important this was for me? I'll never get another opportunity like this. Everything was riding on this! I don't... Oops, sorry. I don't think that there was a good answer. I want to try something. Try stepping back from the stage. Okay. Oh, there's a lamppost. You just keep going? Oh. Oh, I'm in prison again. You're in a jail. Cool, the game ends with this okay, eerie yes. premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution going to prison? Social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success. The answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away. Mm. Which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looked to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. But what can you do? After this, Coda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Mobius trick. To play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Click to begin the game. Oh, okay, I'm going to try it. Okay, ready? Okay, you close your eyes. What's going on? Uh, what? Captain, what can we do? I can't die like this! I can't die like this! What is going okay. on? Sorry, Finn. I made Finn panic. Uh, help, I'm... Number one, I help, I'm blind. Number two, I can't see anything. Number three, what's going on? Okay, well... Here we go. Three. Did you do something to fix this? What's going on? Oh no! Oh no! <gasps> oh! Did you describe anything that was going on to help me? Nope. Sorry, my bad. Okay. One help. I'm blind. Two. I can't see anything. Three. Oh, it's probably much impossible to solve other. Oh well. Uh, you told me to close my eyes. Rude. We were trying to work with the within the parameters that you gave me, sir. Um, please don't let this be forever. Be quiet and help me find the shields. The shields? Oh, ah! baby. Yep, that's a giant door we are flying into. Okay. Yeah. Shields! Oh, a whisper. Oh. Ah! That's what was coming at me the first time. So let's solve this. We're gonna activate the shields. Ooh, door. No! Okay, okay, we're getting this. The only way to stop it is to speak something that is honest. Oh, look at the answers. I'm bursting with creative energy. I can't keep making these. My work is always fun. Oh, well, that's not the one I no, wanted. No, no, that isn't truthful. That's the one I wanted. Give me another option. Give me a chance. Coach, put me in. Nope, looks like you get coach! one chance to be truthful. Ow, oh, coach. All right, let me explain how no. you're supposed to do this. I get it. On either side of the room are elevators. Yes. Which go up to an upper level. You have to go up, walk over to the person who's standing. Yep. And then select dialogue option number two. That's what I was going to do. Yes, that's it. That's the truth. I can't keep making these. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing? Like I said, I was getting concerned. I don't feel it anymore. First off, I'm out of ideas. He's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. All so the above? Where's that coming from? But then even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. 
And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Koda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. I said I'm out of ideas. I said, keep going, keep talking. One, I haven't been honest. Two, I can't figure out how to say the thing. Three, I thought it was going to be easy. Two. You're doing it. It's working. I'm alone. I'm stuck in it. I have to work harder. I'm stuck feels, in it? Feels like one is it. It's a one. lot of like sadness about True. talking to himself. We're gonna be okay. So I expected this to be like fun, and it's been pretty like it's been heavy. Yeah. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Fascinating. And um, intrig. In What's that word? Hello. Ooh. silent come from two how did i get out of here three hello is anyone there hello is anyone there is that a person how lovely it's been a long time since i talked to anyone it's the tree the tree is talking to us what's wrong you look lost i'm talking to wood i'm completely out of ideas two when i try to create i feel empty oh Three, I have nothing left to give to my work. Oh, what do you think? Oh, I have nothing left to give to my work. That's kind of what I was thinking. Oh. Oh no! What's happened? Did something change? One, there was a machine that kept me going and it stopped. Two, I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me to start it again. Oh. The whisper machine? Probably, yeah. So it looked. There was a machine that kept me going and it stopped. Wait, you're looking for a machine? I think I know where it is. It isn't far. Okay. One, what? Two, you have to take me to it. Three, I need to see it to know why it stopped. I'm going three. Yeah. <clears throat> I can take you to it, if but there's the a problem. If the last game featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, Frustration, anxiety, depression, even. Mm -hmm. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder, even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. It's his coping Why? mechanism. What is it for? Yeah. That's how he copes, man. It's guarded by a difficult puzzle. If you can help me solve the puzzle, we'll find the machine. Deal? One deal. Two deal. Three, it doesn't matter what I say, does it? We're going to end up there one way or another, right? Is a deal. He's also making these for him. For himself. So it's probably a place where he can also be really honest. Mm -hmm. Without feeling ridiculed. Yeah. Well. Just about yeeted myself into oblivion. Yep. Hey. Aww. Perfect. Come along. I'll show it to you. Hey From my perspective at the time, and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet, and so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. Here's the puzzle. What do you think? I've solved this puzzle before. Oh, wonderful. Can you tell me how to do it? 
First, you have to close the door. First, you have to open the door. First, you have to press the switch on the side. Three. First, you press the switch. Mm -hmm. On the inside, though. Oh, I thought yeah. it was on the inside. I missed that. No. It's my bad. I'm sorry. You have to open the door. Too. I'm sorry, voidless god. Okay, you have to close the door. You have to open the door. Two. You have to press the switch on the side. Two. Open the door. My bad. Please don't judge me harshly. There. Oh, you step into the now. switch. Now you press the switch on the inside. Now you have to open the door first. Now you have to close the first door. You have to close the first door. Number one. Oh, you didn't let me through. Okay, you have to open the door. Oh, now it's not. Okay, I couldn't get through before. Now you have to close. Okay, I'm going to go through first. There we go. Ah! There, see? We got this. Mwah. Did she just kiss the developer? Shh. All right, what's next? Now press the switch here. Ta-da! You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> that's, that's, you that's can't deep. be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. Mm -hmm. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Ha! Huh, that was so simple. I can't believe I never solved it before. Okay, here we are. One, what are you talking about? Two, there's no machine here. Three, these are just words or on some walls. What's the machine do? You said the machine. These are the answers that you gave. I have nothing left to give to my work. Oh, I didn't Deal. Get this. I need to see it to, it to know why it stopped. I've solved this puzzle before. There was a machine that kept me going. All of these are answers you've given it. Yeah, it's all no. Three it is. These are just words on some walls. Trust me, you'll see. You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that game development is simple and joyous and that you love it 100% of the time. One, okay, making games is simple. Two, sure, making games is easy. Three, all right, making games is effortless. One, two, three. Oh, we're breaking the walls. Ah, that feels wonderful. One, but it wasn't true. Two, why did the wall just crumble? Three, why did I feel so awful when I said that? I guess we're going three. Yep. Don't worry about it. You just keep talking, sexy boy. <laughs> keep saying that creation is easy. One, when I make games, I feel completely energized. Two, I am constantly excited and enthusiastic about my work. Three, it is easy. It never stops being easy. I see what's going on here. Mm. Reverse psychology, your own brain. We are lying to ourselves. Good, good, good. I'm sure that's healthy. Yes, that's wonderful. Keep going. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me i was watching him do this to himself and i hated it i hated seeing him so trapped it's like video games are not worth this amount of suffering every time i make something i feel better about myself two so never stop creating it'll never feel bad that's a lie three such a simple solution every time i make something i feel better about myself Perfect. That feels fantastic. What I really cared about, and I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. Like to vomit. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. One, none of this is helping. Two, I'm gonna vomit. Three, please, where's the machine? Three. Three. Patience. You have to trust me. I promise this will work. Please continue. One, pain breezes effortlessly off me. Two, any sacrifices made for my work are worth it 100% of the time. Three, it always pays off eventually. Two. Two. Yes, more. Keep going. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. But... Oh, crap. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I will be saved by my work. I never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. 
Like an itchy trigger finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, the prison. Going back to the prison. Oh. We're in the prison. Somebody is. Who's that? But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. May 2011. The Machine. Guard! Ma'am, glad to see you arrived safely. You've captured the machine. It's right for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you like. I intend to be quick. I intend to be quiet. Or I intend to be brutal. Brutal! I intend to be brutal! Brutality. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press, so we might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine. It calls itself Coda. What will we do with the machine? Please give us answers. When will we get answers? Please, can you take a minute to interview? Oh, this is all the stuff I just want to deal with. Mm hmm Ugh, it's so much pressure. Press. Pressure. And of course, it's the machine. Why did you stop this time? Why did you stop? One, you stopped feeding us. Two, your work was keeping us alive. Three, your work was keeping us healthy. One, you stopped feeding us. One, those people out there. Can you imagine what pain you've put them through? Two, it was only because of your creations that any of us could make it through every day. Three, how could we possibly go back to trusting you to do this job? about this for a start? You need to go to the people who are out there and apologize to them. Two, you have to admit the people that you allowed them to suffer. Three, I've been so alone. Well, there goes that theme of being alone. <clears throat> One, apologize for leaving me. No, I think. Two, think carefully. I know how to hurt you. Three, I have seen the thing you fear. One. All right, then. I will apologize to the people on your behalf. Followers or my friends? My friends. One, it falls on me to deliver bad news. Two, I have a troubling revelation. Uh, it falls on me to deliver <clears throat> bad news. Straight honesty. <laughs> oh no! Damn it! The machine refused to admit that it deliberately hurt us? One, but this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. Two, we will find a way to live without it. We do not need its games. Two. One, let us pay a retribution. Two, let us show it that we are not failures. Oh boy. Um, one. One, follow me. We will destroy the machine. Two. Follow me. We'll destroy everything that the machine has created. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, I got nothing. This one's on you. Follow me. We'll destroy the machine. Back to the stage. Oh, okay. Got the 
gun. <gasps> I know the amphitheater is empty, but this feels weird. It was set for demolition. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? I need you to shoot every single typewriter. Too late. Any more time, guys? OCD to mad at something. Yeah. It did. I took that away from her. Just like my hope. Why is Terry yawn? Oh, we're falling. Why kind of yawn with Terry? So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one and the island which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape game. I brought them to people that I knew and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his game. You know, the point of it all was just to give them some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Put down your weapon. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something, I really felt like I'd done something good, like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. The tower. Okay. You know what I think about tarot cards? You know that like the tower is not the one you want. That's and foreboding. I don't know if it is tarot cards though. No, but it's still foreboding. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. Gonna slam me down in front of us. Behind us? On us? On us, <laughs> yeah. This room okay. actually has a maze in it. Oh. oh. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. 
And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. It's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's six digit code, random guess. No, thank you. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here though, so that we can move on. It's not going to be, it's not going to be. Guys, I figured it out. No. I fingered it out, guys. No. No, I fingered it out. I didn't even have to use the code he gave me. Could you imagine if this was it? I would lose it. Ah, oh, I wasn't even close. No, not even close. 15, 16, The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door. Of course it is. That it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem but I can open this door for you so let me do that was I a failure for not understanding this game I, mean, I don't know why I would be it's not like everything needs to have a solution but I feel it somehow I feel like I failed and I don't understand why I remember it's June of 2011 I'm playing this for the very first time, and as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. I, I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Damn. Jesus. Where did I screw up? Dear Davey, thank you for your interest in I my niece. I am the reason that you stopped making games. I need to ask you not to speak to me anymore. That's because of what I did. Oh. I poisoned it for you.
I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt, <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I'm run I wonder at times whether you think I'm making these games for you. You've so infected my personal and space. The people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. You've so infected my personal space that it's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere. Hidden between games. If there was an answer, a meaning, would it make you any happier? Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? Giving them something that is not yours to give. Violating the one boundary that keeps me safe. Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lampposts to them? Would you simply let them stop. be what they no, are? I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. When I'm around you, I feel physically ill. You desperately need something that I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just a part of the process. The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. I realize this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you are wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I am talking about, don't say anything. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything, and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's so Please funny. You could totally start making it. games yeah. again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. I want to know how to how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Holy crap. Love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. 
solution, solution, solution. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. Well, don't I feel guilty now? Yeah. I made the assumptions Even too. now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. us forever. Yeah. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. Oh, don't we all? Don't we all? Thanks. Appreciate okay. it, Davey. Well, we've all been driven into multiple accidental crises. I need to just go lay down on the floor for 12 hours. I said that jokingly like 30 minutes ago, but I mean it now. No, I'm not walking through it. I'm going against it. Smack! Damn it. There's not enough for arm strength. Come on. Yeah. Do a pull up. Ugh. So close. Yeah. Oh, there you there go. go. We're back here. But there's no more other doors. Don't go to the light. It's a train. It actually is a train. We are in a train station. <laughs> I don't feel good about any of this. Oh, it's so convenient. And out we go. Feeling very, very small right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That point came back and smacked me right in the face. Mm -hmm. Just living our best maze life. tell you it's going to take me days to recover from this I am not okay 
I was told we're gonna just, you know, learn to be creative again. Get those juices flowing. I feel the opposite of that. <laughs> now I'm just gonna tell people mind their own, leave my creative juices out of this. I do good. I'm gonna cool it down and cry. You don't like it too bad. Come on, prison. Oh. Stay out of my prison. Don't touch my prison wallet. This feels like, oh my goodness, if this is truly what happened, and he's true, like, if everything in, in this is true. Mm -hmm. I feel so upset that we played it. At the same time, I don't, because it's, the message is really good. Yes, yeah, but it feels like such a violation of this person's privacy. Yeah, but is it worth it to be like, hey, maybe I have violated somebody in the past? Maybe I did something I shouldn't have done? Totally, but you're just, you're you're standing on top of doing something terrible to explain that you've done something terrible by doing something terrible. Yeah. Like, it just, it all just feels bad, and I just don't like it, and I need to go lay down. Maybe that's how we wake the world up. Doing something terrible to realize how terrible you've been. Good, but damn you. I need to go to bed. I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you how how over the edge this sent me into like I have no purpose, nothing matters, and everything's gonna die. That is my space right now. I'm not okay. I mean, I was like, hey, I gotta work on D and D tomorrow. I want to get some new ideas. Maybe this will help. Well, no, that didn't help at all. No. no. No, it didn't help me. Who is watching this and like, mm, I am flowing with creativity now. Like, who is, why, who, who, who? And three who? times in the past, like, week, I've seen individual videos of individual content creators being like, play this game to get your creative juices flowing. And they all said the same message. It wasn't like this game is sad. This game is a revelation for your, your inner child. No, it was... Creative juices flowing. They are all mm. lying. They are all, they got together and they were like, we are going to ruin some lives, people. What so, yeah. can we say to get them to play this game that will ruin their lives? That was the beginner's guide. Let us know what you think in the comments below. What kind of perspectives did you come out of it with? And how are you going to change your future or somebody else's?